Okay, hey, how's it going everybody? Today what we're gonna do is talk about mini maps or just maps in general. Uh, this is one that I created for uh, the demo that I did lately. And as you can see here, we have some animation of the waves crashing against the beach. We have some uh, sparkly lights on the water that change around. So we put up a little small indication so you know what to do. Um, so click on the colored location, hit the keys when asked. So you click on the location, it brings up what we call the dog whistle, and you have to play these keys in order to get to that location. So ASDF. And then the guy walks from the last location over to that location. And then that location starts. <clears throat> so how did we do this? So first I created a scene for it called Minimap over on the side here. And inside of that, uh, we changed the cursor. We played some ambient uh, sound effects that just went on a loop and then loaded up our background image, which is just the background of the map. And then all the black and white areas that you can go to within that map are then loaded in. We then had to um, call some common events down here. Uh, this one does the water and the river stuff. Um, and they these basically run in parallel with it and they just cycle through a loop that we can go check out later. So every spot needs three versions of an image. The first version is the black and white image. This can all be tied in together on the same background image of your map if you want. You don't have to space them out separately. I didn't know if some of these locations were going to change, so I ended up making it where I could erase them and put in new locations if I needed to. Image 2 is the clickable version. This image is colored and appears over the top of the black and white when the new area is switched on. If the area is already done, then this can be easily switched back into black and white and erased. First, we create a condition to check the switches. And basically, using the variables like we did in the health bar, uh, you can set a variable for a, a place to go to. Um, and if it's equal to on, then uh, it's going to open up a image map. And inside that image map has the colored version of where they're going to click on, as well as a hovered version. You have to create a hotspot for it. Um, my hovered version just has a little outline, so the hotspot has to cover at least the whole diameter of where the outline is in order to show it. Otherwise, let's say your your hover had like a glow that went out to here, then it would crop exactly where the, uh, the hotspot stops at. You would see that line. Also, if you go into properties here, we have a jump to, uh, but you can also call common events and do different things. We also used our on clicks and our hovers to make the sound effects that you hear uh, for when you hover over and off of it. Important note, anything in the condition has to be indented in. Uh, as you see here, you can. Uh, this is straight down the line. It has to indent one over for this condition to read this next. Otherwise, if this show image map was there, uh, it would just check to see if it was on, and then it would just continue onward. Switches are key for turning these areas on and off and can be placed in the scene either ahead or after you load the mini map. So every time you load up the mini map, it will check all the different locations and whatever is switched on before that will show and anything switched off won't. Uh, that's the easiest way to basically turn on and off locations if you're trying to do a choose your own adventure style where uh, you want the player to choose which location they want to go to and all the locations aren't on. So let's say in the last scene, the main character had to go from the, uh, this house here uh, to the next spot, which was the cave. Once we switched on the cave, we have our own element pop up, which we call the dog whistle because the whole game revolved around cats and dogs. And that was a common event. So if we go into our common events here under dog whistle, we have a show picture, which is the dog whistle itself popping up. We wait half a second. We change the font. We also then show uh, text. So we show what to press, and right here is the A, then we show the S, and then so on and so forth. So then we wait for an input, in this case, key A. Uh, once it's pressed, then it does these following things, which basically erases the A and shows the check mark that you've done it, 
also plays the sound effect. So once all four are played, it jumps to the play song, which plays the whole jingle that you heard, erases all the dog whistle as well as the check marks, and then plays the movie of the man walking from the house up to the cave. We wait uh, 10 seconds because that's how long the animation is for. Once that's done, we erase the picture and then stop the music. We also then erase the movie and then uh, and then we just do a normal change scene into whatever scene you want to load into that. The nice thing about this is this is all happening in the background that you don't have to worry about in your main mini map uh, area. You just have to call that common event. As you saw with the hotspot for the cave, it's going to jump to Witch and Warlock. Down here in the same area that we have the mini map, we have a label called Witch and Warlock. What that does is call that common event that I just showed you and then idles by. Basically, it, it idles until you've done all these commands and then once those are done and it loads the new scene, this idle and everything don't matter anymore. You're basically done with this mini map area. Um, and that's basically how we separated our mini map um, setup. It's just basically kind of like a copy and paste for the any other locations that you're trying to go to and then just loading up a new chapter or scene in your game, depending on what the player clicked on. For our animation of the character walking, in Visual Novel Maker, we didn't know how to animate him walking around the town and into the areas that we needed to go. So we brought him into Premiere Pro and we used a movie file to start him where we knew the last location would be at have him walk around all the way through and then up to the location that we knew that the player was going to choose in the demo. We would then do this for every uh, you know, location that we knew was going to pop up. So let's say the, the water mill and the cave were both there and we didn't know which one the player was going to click on. We would have one set up in case they click on the mountains, he would go to the mountains. And then if he clicked on to the water mill, we would do an animation to walk up to the water mill. This would be loaded in the same... Um, common event for wherever they clicked at. So how would you turn these on and off? So let's say I wanted the uh, cave turned on. I would add a switch. In my case, I have mine on for which on, and I would switch it to on. This, play, this switch I could place in any scene, again, before or after, um, even once they go up to the mountains and the caves. In that In that scene, I can then turn on other switches to other parts of the game before we're done with that scene so that when we go back to the mini map and it refreshes to check if all these places are are loaded or not then <clears throat> any ones that I switched on would then be preloaded and then they could then go to those selected areas. I want to preference this with saying that this is more of advanced uh, setup for how to do a map in a game. There's a very easy way that you can do this as well that I'll take a look at right now. So this is a very basic version of how to do a map as well if you want. This is using draggable hotspots. So right now I just have an image of a map over the top and I added a hotspot that has a draggable uh, image on it. So the image is just a magnifying glass with a hand on it. And then down at the bottom here, I made draggable turned on to yes. And I've added an area over the whole area of the map uh, because this is a like another hotspot that you can say you're only able to drag, you know, if it was here, you'd only be able to drag within this area. So you make the draggable area as wide as you want it to be, and then you can basically drag your your image over that whole area. And then I have another hotspot down here that once this one reaches it, it th then reveals something. So down here is that little hotspot, which correlates right here to this spot. Uh, this took a little uh, work to find out where exactly that was at. You can also, I think, add a background image to make your life a little easier to find out where that hotspot would be. Once this image reaches that hotspot on enter, it jumps to a show label. So down here, there's a show label. And then what it does, it's going to show this little German flag down here. Um, so to see that in action, draggable hotspot with the image. And then once I go to the area, I'm like, okay, there's nothing here except for, boom, German flag. And then it stays there. And anywhere that I leave the uh, draggable area, it would stay at. And that's another way that you could do like finding clues or 
you know, uh, exploring the map instead of just having to click on something. This is a little bit more interactive, uh, which is just kind of opens up another way for you to figure out how you want to do your mini maps. All right, I think that's about it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'm happy to answer anything that you might have. I know I kind of breeze through a lot of this pretty quickly, um, but again, the things that you need to know are conditions, switches, and common events, basically. If you can figure those things out, you should be in good shape, um, as well as number variables. Yeah, have a good day.